This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again by unbeaten Superman to wait, Michael Conlon. Michael, how are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm just chilling on rest day. All good. Glad to hear it. We've obviously recently had the announcement of your next fight, August the 6th in Falls yeah. Park. The second time uh, one of your fights will be the focal point of the FIBA and Fobal Festival. It's not easy to say, but I've had a bit of practice after the last one. Oh, that are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can, in your answer, you can say it correctly and uh, I'll stand corrected. But yeah, so this time around, you've got a fellow Irish opponent, appropriately yeah. for the occasion in TJ the Haney. How happy are you that this has come together? Former world champion, of course. I'm, I'm delighted. Um, I think it's a fantastic fight. Someone who has been to the mountain top, won the world title, you know, defended it and fought in the unification fight and, and lost the close decision to Danny Roman. So um, I don't take nothing from his last fight against Beluda because I know that he didn't train. He didn't even try to make any weight to see where he further weight. Didn't leave Australia. He stayed, stayed there and trained instead of going to Boston like he usually does. So um, he took he underestimated him and took an L. But I still know he's a lot better than what he showed then. Um, I think it's a... The perfect fate at the perfect time for me. Now pronounce the name of the festival for me. Fela and football. Yeah, I said FIBA, didn't I? I think I got the two yeah, words yeah, mixed yeah. up. Yeah. I've been practicing yeah. so hard and then I've, I've, uh, I've got it wrong Tomorrow on the big, big, big occasion. Froze. <laughs> uh, you talked about Blue today and, and uh, Dehaney's fight with him. That was obviously your last opponent as well, just a few yeah. months ago. I'm sure you've looked back on it since then. How do you assess your performance in winning that 12 round decision? Oh, listen, it was it, it was a good performance. Um, I went in there. I didn't take much punches at all, considering how much uh, Blue to let go. So. Um, there was some things I need to work on, which you know I I know some things I done wrong where. I was stuck in a rut in terms of my main set in there, trying to just punch him with one punch. I'm not one, one punch puncher, so um, I don't know why I was doing that. I kind of just, I kind of underestimated a bit myself. I thought he would fall a bit quicker, but he had a 15 week training camp. He was fully prepared, so I, I was in there against the best I knew blue that there would be. Um, I thought the cards were a bit shit. I didn't, I didn't agree with them at all. Um, I think even when you see the stats and stuff after, you can tell that the reason why I didn't believe him, because I know I wasn't being hit, I knew this, I know he looked busy, but there's one thing, looking busy and being busy is different. Um, yeah, I thought it was a good performance. I thought it was a solid win. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the cards. Two of them in particular were very close. It doesn't yeah. reflect the fight that I watched on TV. I'm assuming it didn't feel like that in there either. No, it didn't. It didn't. Um, he throws an awful lot of punches, but I knew none of them were landed. Um, if you're a referee or a judge, you should be, you're at that close, you're, you're right up at the ring. You should be seeing what's landing and what's not landing. So um, the scores were it baffled me when I heard them and kind of annoyed me and kind of took probably the, the shame of just another victory away from, from, from the whole thing. And, you know, I actually went away very annoyed. Um, Believing I should be doing even better, I should be. Um, I should always have come away like that. I should always come away wanting to be even better than what I performed. So, um, I was straight back in the gym. You no, know, two days later, working on what I need to work on. Have you lost a tooth, or has that always been a gap? No, there? no, I've lost. I've lost a tooth. I've lost a tooth. It's uh, one of my, as as anybody who knows and has listened to any of my interviews knows my teeth are fake anyway. But one of the veneers kind of popped off when it was a. Uh, I forget actually forget it was doing it happened ages ago and then I got it fixed and they come off again so I'm just waiting to get it sorted proper thanks for uh, clearing that up um, don't worry about it <laughs> on box rec at the moment the fight with Dehaney is listed as a 10 rounder but is there a chance there'll be some sort of title or eliminator at stake um, I'm not too sure uh, I, I think it is an eliminator um I didn't know I don't even know anything about you know, what, what's on the line probably the the belt I have at the minute the WWE WWE or the Continental or the National one of them them. Um, I know that you know the next step after this is is uh, the winner of the September 11th fight against Stephen Fulton with Stephen Fulton versus uh, Brandon Figueroa so um, 
that's what the next move is after this. But you know, I, so I, I I would think something will be on the line. Do you still fancy Fulton's come out on top in that? I think we spoke before Figueroa mm. had won his last fight, and you said out of the three, you expected Fulton's come through. Is that still the case? Yeah, yeah, I still I still think he does, but. No, Figueroa showed you know some some big heart and uh, and some you know smart you know punch picking. You no, know, he picked a lovely body shot against you know a very good fighter. Showed toughness as well um, against a great fighter and uh, your man. I forget his name. <laughs> if he does win um, in September yeah. and you get through your fight at uh, Fila, do you think it'll end up being in March at St Patrick's Day next year? Is that most likely because of your following? It depends. Does now have it in December? No problem. But depending on how, I suppose, depending on how they come out of it, either either or whoever wins, you know, whether you know they're willing to fight in December, or they're injured, or something else like that happens. Depends whether it happens in December. If it doesn't happen in December, it happens in March. Uh, with your fan base. Um people knowing you, following you and so on, you could have had a world title shot probably earlier than you're going to. But is that mm. a blessing in disguise in that you've had more time to learn, adapt to new styles, you've moved down in weight as well, of course? Yeah, I'd say so. i say so. I believe everything in life happens for a reason. Um, this being one of them, you know, I could be rushed along too quick and uh, uh, and fall, fall at a shorter hurdle. You know what I mean? It's... It's it's not inevitable that would have happened. So um, I think how how I've been matched and how I've been moved is you know I, I I'm happy with it. You know I, I'm a piece with it. I'm I, I'm I'm patient. So you know I'm I'm not I'm not ready just to go. I want it now. I want it now. I want it now. And then make a mistake. You know I, I I'm I'm making the, the right moves at the right time. I think. And how happy are you with how the card as a whole is coming together? The announcement went out what about half an hour ago. Yeah. Of two fights that have been added to the show, Tyron McKenna against Turoff, which is obviously supposed to happen before. Yeah. Lee McGregor against LeGrand, a European title defence. It's a pretty stacked yeah. card. Yeah, yeah. And there's more fights coming as well. So, you know, it's a fantastic card. Um, solid card, solid fights on it. Fan friendly fights there. Um, an all Irish clash, seven and a half thousand or eight thousand, whatever it's going to be, in, in a park. Um, big, big event, like one of the biggest events, I think, since the lockdown is kind of, or well, all this pandemic shit's kind of eased off. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. It's it's gonna be fantastic. But no, I, I am fully focused. I know, I know what's at stake. I know, you know, if if I don't beat TJ Tahini, I I don't get the step on the whatever is next. How motivating do you think the whole occasion will be for TJ as well? You know, he's coming to upset the home favourite, but also it's his first fight in Ireland for a long, long time. Former world champion. He hasn't been in the ring for over a year. He must be desperate for that win as well. 100%. I think he's 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 very, very hungry for it. Um, he, he knows he underperformed and he knows he let, 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 let the baton slip when he fought Baluda because he didn't put the work in. Um he, belong, he believes he still belongs at the top and this is his probably last chance saloon for him to get back to where he wants to get back to and this can catapult him right back there. So this is a man coming fighting for his life, fighting for everything he wants, fighting for all his dreams and I understand that and I understand the motivation he'll have. He's, 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 he's not going to come and lie down. He wants to come and take my head off and, and take the position I'm in. So you know, I gotta be prepared for that and willing to walk through fire for it. How helpful has it been to you, not just in terms of making weight, but just keeping that motivation going that you're back out so soon after your last fight? You haven't always had regular action in that sense, especially with the pandemic, but you're you're on yeah. a bit of a roll. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. If I'm honest, I like I like a bit of a break in between, but <laughs> yeah, you know, right. uh, it's uh it's a few months, but you no, know, it's it's enough time to get ready. Um, I, I stay in shape. I always stay in shape anyway, and you know I'm I'm excited to see what the sixth of August can bring because I I believe I believe it's going to be a fantastic night. I think I think the fight itself, me versus TJ, is going to be brilliant. 
the, when I spoke to you a while ago, I think you were planning or just about to move in with Josh Kelly or Jim May. Yeah. He's obviously not in the gym at the moment. He had that tough fight yeah. earlier this year. Are you staying on your own now? Um, no, as no, I'm I'm alone this week. But um, another teammate has moved in. Uh, Arn Arn Charmers from yeah. Jory Shore. Everybody will know him from, but um, is it was an MMA fighter now. He's He's looking to the turn professional and has been in the gym near a year now, um, putting serious grafting and uh, and he says, oh, I'll move down, we are sure. So he's moved in, he's kept me company. Um, he uh, does the cleaning for me, does the washing for me. I make the coffee and that's 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 how I live. I think you've got a better end of that deal. <laughs> Listen, I'm a good coffee maker. So, you know, for him to, to do the wash and do the cleaning is just for... What's <laughs> it been like sharing with him? Are you guys pretty close then, I'm guessing? Yeah, he's, oh, listen, he's a lovely fella. Um, we've been in this apartment getting together since the start of the year. And, you know, as I said, he's been near here almost a year now coming. Um, he's a great guy, a very down-to-earth person. Um, you know, and someone who, who puts the work in. Um Jay's name from Newcastle every single week to London to do over the Surrey to train and then go home. He has two, he has three kids at home. So, you know, he, he's dedicated and he seems like he really wants to work. And he's showed in, like, he he went from, you know, being on Geordie Shore to, to having MMA fights in front of thousands of people. So he has the battle for it. And, you know, if he can, you know, do that in boxing, you know, fair play. And, you know, I, I have to give him respect. Do you see him as a bit of a kindred spirit and that you've got a young family at home as well and you have to regularly leave them behind and sacrifice in pursuit of your own goals? 100%. 100%. Exactly. I've done, you know, very like myself, you know, he, he sacrificed the time being away from his family. Although, like, I only have to fly back one hour. He has to drive back eight hours or something. So, I'm honest, I wouldn't even bother going back. <laughs> it's, just, it's too long traveling. But uh, no, you see, he's he's actually I think he's the old, only one older than me in the gym, um, and uh, and it's nice. He's he's he, he's he has a good calm head and shoulders, and you know, he's very chilled out. So um, I like I, I like him being around. He's he's a good guy. How quickly have you seen him develop from someone who had obviously some striking experience, but now trying mm. to become more of a, a traditional boxer? It's took time. I'll be honest. It's took time for him um, because boxing is completely different than MMA, and how the punch, the correct technique, and everything, it takes time to get that. Um, and it'll still take a long time for him to, to to be perfect at it. And no one is ever really perfect in boxing. So um, he's he's developed very very well over the last year. You've seen massive improvements. Um, even his physicality, his mental, his mental fitness, and everything has just got much, much stronger. And you know, uh, I'm excited to see, you know, when he does actually fight. You know, I, I, was, I, I put him in against any of them guys now, Jake Paul, any of them. You know, they would be, uh, <laughs> they would be his dream fight, obviously, because they're the money fights. But everyone wants um, to fight Jake Paul. The everybody, I fight Jake Paul. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you would, yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, listen, he's he, he's in that kind of atmosphere and. He, he could fight any of them type of like celebrity kind of guys that want to box professional, but he actually wants to be a professional boxer and he, he wants to set himself a goal, um, probably British champion or, or English champion at some stage um, over his career. Well, good luck to him. I mean, Curtis Woodhouse obviously switched from football, didn't he, quite late on in life and got to a British yeah. title. So there's the standards there. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely doable. Good stuff. Really appreciate catching up um, and best of luck with the rest of the camp. Looking forward to seeing a, a great spectacle at Fila and Fobel. You! Get in on August the 6th. I'm officially Irish now. There's no going back. That's it. Good morning. Cheers, mate. You take care. All right, mate. You, you too. Take care.